Hello, mathematicians. Thanks for joining me as we look at the relation R on the set of real numbers given by R is a set of x comma y and R cross R such that x minus y is an integer. What we want to do today is we want to show that the given relation is indeed an equivalent relation. So that is, we want to show that it is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. After that, what we want to do is find the equivalence classes and determine what the partition of the real numbers looks like for the given equivalence class. All right, instead of trying to show that R is equivalence in all one step, what we're going to do is we're going to break it into portions, and we're going to start off by showing that R is a reflexive relation. So what is reflexive? Well, a reflexive relation means that for all A and the real numbers, we have that. A is related to A, or otherwise that A comma A is in the relation R. So what we want to show is that A is related to itself, or the ordered pair A A is in R. And so what we need to do is we need to think about what does it mean for A A to be in R. And what that means is that it has to satisfy the property that it's an ordered pair in R cross R. And so to check that A A is in R cross R, what we have to do is we have to say, well, is A a real number? Is A a real number? And notice that we're saying A is a real number because we're trying to show it's reflexive on the set of real numbers. Therefore, A, A is, in fact, an element of R cross R. So we do satisfy this first property. The next thing we have to show is that it satisfies the second property is that we need to show that a minus a is an integer, but a minus a is just equal to zero. Since zero is an integer, we do indeed get that r is reflexive. And so now what we've done here is we've just kind of written out what we were thinking and what we needed to show. So in order to combine this all together to get a formal proof, we're ready to do that. All right, so to write up the formal proof for reflexive, what we're going to get is that our proof is let A be a real number. Then we note that A comma A is in R cross R since A is a real number. So we have an ordered pair of real numbers. Furthermore, We have that a minus a is equal to zero, which is an integer. So we get that a comma a is in the relation R, or that is a is related to a, hence R is a reflexive relation. All right, to show R is a symmetric relation, what we have to do is show that if A and B are elements of the real numbers, then, or I should say and, A is related to B, then we have to show that B is related to A. So what we get to assume is that A and B are both real numbers and A is related to B. And what we need to get out is that B is related to A. So now if I think about what does it mean for A to be related to B, is that, well, A, B is in the set of R cross R, and we also have that A minus B is equal to K for some integer K. Now, if we take the same thing, what we need to show is that B A is in R cross R, and that B minus A is equal to some integer, we'll say K1, for K1 and Z. And so what I get is that I have to show that if A B is in R cross R, and A minus B is an integer, I then have to show B minus A is an integer. Well, if we think about that, if we want to say, oh, well, B minus A is an integer, I'm going to start off and say, well, B minus A is equal to, and I want to write it so that I can use the fact that A minus B is an integer. 
And the way I'm going to do that is just multiply by negative 1. I get b minus a is negative 1 times a minus b. So if I distribute the negative, I end up with my b minus a. But a minus b is just k. So what I get is that b minus a is negative k. But since k is an integer, negative k is an integer. Therefore, we have shown that b minus a is an integer if a minus b is an integer. So therefore, if we have a r b, we have b r a. And so now what we can do is we can combine this together to give a formal proof that r is a reflexive relation. All right, so now as we write this up formally, what we're going to say is our proof is going to be let a and b be real numbers with a related to b. Then what we have to show is remember that b r a, so what we're going to say is note that b comma a is in r cross r because a and b are both real numbers. So if these are both real numbers, it's in r cross r. And so we're showing the first part of this. And then remember the next thing we're going to show is that x minus y is in z, or that b minus a is in z. And so what we say is, furthermore, since a, r, b, we have that a minus b is equal to k for some k in z. Therefore, b minus a is equal to negative a minus b is equal to negative k is in z since the integers are closed under multiplication. That is, we're taking negative 1 times an integer. The negative 1 is an integer, k is an integer. If I multiply two integers, I again get an integer. So therefore, negative k is an integer. Therefore, b minus a is an integer. Therefore, or hence, b r a and R is symmetric. Thus we have that R is indeed a symmetric relation because if A and B are real numbers with A R B, we also have B R A. Now that we have that R is both reflexive and symmetric, we now have to show that it's transitive. So what does transitive mean is it means that, well, let's suppose that we have A, B, and C are real numbers. And we also have that A, R, B, and B, R, C. We then have to show that A is related to C. That is, we have the transitive property that A, R, B, and B, R, C, so we can go directly from A to C. And so what we want to do is we want to think about what does that mean. Well, if A is related to B, then A, B is in R, R, and B, C is in R, R. And since A, B, C are real numbers, I would think A, C would also be in the reals cross the reals. So we have that portion. The other portion we have to show is that just if we want A, R, C, what we're going to have to show is that A minus C is an integer. So somehow we have to get out that A minus C is an integer based on these things up here. And these things tell us that a minus b is an integer, and b minus c is an integer. Well, if I think about this, that just means that a minus b is, let's say, k1, and b minus c is, say, k2, for k1 and k2 integers. And somehow I have to get out that a minus c is an integer. And so I'm just going to say a minus c is equal to... Well, I don't know directly what a minus c is equal to, but I do know what a minus b is, and I know what b minus c is. So if I could get something like a minus b and b minus c, 
say add them, then I would know that this is an integer and this is an integer. But I just can't arbitrarily add things and subtract things unless I add and subtract the same thing. So notice here, by looking at what we wanted to get, we said, well, we need a minus b and a plus b. Well, minus b plus b is indeed just zero. So all I've done here is added zero. Therefore, I get that a minus c is indeed equal to a minus b plus b minus c. But this is just some integer plus some integer. And since the integers are closed under addition, we get that a minus c is indeed an integer. Therefore, A is related to C, so therefore R would be a transitive relation. And so the next thing I need to do is just provide the formal proof thereof. All right, so now that I just start my formal proof, I'm gonna say let A, B, and C be real numbers with A, R, B, and B, R, C. And then we need to show A is related to C. Since we need to show A is related to C, we need to show that the ordered pair AC is in the reals cross the reals. So what we're gonna do is say note, that AC is in R cross R because A and C are both real numbers. So we have this property, we just need to show this property. So now what we get is A minus C is equal to A minus B plus B minus C. And then a, since A, R, B, we have A minus B is an integer, and B minus C is an integer, or K1 and K2 integers. Hence, a minus C is equal to K1 plus K2 is an integer because the integers are closed under addition. And so what we've shown is that A minus C is an integer and AC is in R cross R. Therefore, or thus, a, R, C, and while I've run out of room here, the last thing would be is hence R is a transitive relation because it satisfies the properties of transitivity. Now that we know that R is an equivalence relation, we know that the equivalence classes will form a partition of the real numbers. So what we want to do is figure out what the equivalence classes look like and what the given partition would be. And so I'm just going to start off and say, well, let's take x, and the equivalence class of x is going to look like, well, things are going to be equivalent to x if x minus y is an integer. So this is going to be all y in the real numbers, such that x minus y is equal to some integer k. And so I can say the equivalence class is going to look like all y and r, such that x minus y is an integer. I feel that this would be more helpful if I would say, well, that's going to be the set of all y and r such that x is equal to k plus y for k and z. And if I subtract the k over, I get x minus k is equal to z. But since negative k is just an arbitrary integer as well, what I'm going to say is that, well, let's add the negative with that. And so I could call that a new k is, let's say, k1. And so the equivalence class of x is just going to be all y that can be written as x plus some integer. So everything that can be started with x and I can add any arbitrary integer, I'm going to call these things equivalent. And so if I think about what that looks like is, well, two things are equivalent if, well, I can ignore all the integer part of the number and just look at the decimal part of the number. If the decimal part of the numbers are the same, then they'll be equivalent, regardless of what the integer parts are going to be. And so in order to determine if two things are equivalent, all I have to do is look at the decimal parts. Now, if the decimal parts are different, the equivalence classes will be different. And so what we notice is that if, let's say, x is related to y, then either x is equal to y or 
y is going to be equal to x plus or minus some integer, but the smallest non-zero integer would be 1. Therefore, the closest y and x could be is by a difference of 1. So what I'm trying to point out is that if I take anything outside of 1 away from something, then it could be related to it. But if I take anything within 1 of it, there's no way it could be related to it. And so what I can do is I can find a unique representation of all the classes. Is I could say something like, well, if I take all the relations on 0, I'm going to get all the integers. If I take all the relations for 0 0.1, it's going to be all the integers plus 0.1. And so it's going to be anything in the form, an integer, point 0.1. Now, if I continue through there, what I can do is I can go all the way from 0 to 1, and each of these is going to give me a different decimal. So each one of these is going to be distinct. So everything between 0 and 1 is going to be distinct with each other with re regards to R. That is, none of these are going to be R-related. All of the equivalence classes are going to be disjoint because the decimals parts are not the same. Now, if I take anything outside of here, what I can do is just lop off the integer portion and look at the decimal portion that's left over, and the decimal portion will be between 0 and 1. Therefore, we get that all the equivalence classes of R, or everything in the real numbers, is equivalent to something between 0 and 1, and everything between 0 and 1 is distinct from each other. So, in fact, what we get is that we can partition the real numbers into the equivalence classes of x such that x is in the interval 0 to 1. And each of these, if I take the union of these, I'm going to get all of r. And if I take the intersection of any two of these, I get the empty set. So this would be my partition of r created by the equivalence relation Thank you for joining me today as we work through some proofs. I hope you learned something and that this helped you with your studying. If it did, make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe to the channel.